welcome to live with Sarah and Tasha. We're so excited to see everyone again. Hi everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm just getting myself organized here. I know All I've right. been in your position before where can you see me okay with a glare behind me a little bit? Yeah, you're a little backlit, but that's okay. That's okay. It's just a, a natural setting, right? Welcome to live with Sarah and Tasha. We are so glad that you have joined us today. Um, I am Sarah Hodson, the founder and CEO at Live Well Exercise Clinic, joined by the amazing Tasha McRae, and I'm our VP of Brand and Culture here at Live Well. And for those of you who didn't know, we are Live Well Exercise Clinic's original clinical exercise physiologists and health coaches. And we just love spending this time with all of you every week, um, simply because we are so passionate about the power of exercise and behavior change. And we wanna share that passion with you every single week. That's right. And today we want to talk about a topic that we feel people seem to be very interested in, which is weight loss. So Sarah and I are gonna be sharing sort of five tips for weight loss for you. These are tips that are evidence-based and things that you can actually take to the bank that we know work. And, um, you know, why weight loss? Why is everybody so passionate about it? And I think it's part of the reason is it's normal to gain weight as we age. On, on average, we gain about four and a half kilograms to about 10 pounds per decade. And so as we get a little bit older, it, it can feel like it's harder and harder to keep that weight off. And of course, carrying extra weight does increase our risk of weight related illness, including high blood pressure, diabetes, um, osteoarthritis, coronary artery disease. But the good news here that we're here to share, the good news is that it's never too late to lose weight. And I know we hear a lot about, well, I'm older for women, you know, there's a whole hormonal thing that kicks in at menopause, but it is possible um, to lose weight and to maintain a healthy weight as we age. So Sarah, tip number one. Tip number one, weight or resistance training twice a week. And we often think of weight training as, you know, pounding out heavy weights on a bench. And really weight or resistance training can be done with your body weight. It can be done with resistance bands, but we know that twice a week is really, really important specifically when it comes to weight loss. Um, and so like any exercise, you actually burn calories when you are weight training. So that is obviously important to help to burn off those fat stores and um, there's actually research showing us that a new mechanism through which mus muscle cells deliver the instructions that send fat cells into the fat burning mode in response to the mechanical load. And Tasha specifically was someone who had highlighted um, this research. And um, Tasha, if I didn't do a good job um, explaining that, uh, maybe you want to jump in. Well, I mean, if you're not sizzling, just so excited hearing what Sarah just said, I just don't understand it because I was so excited when I read that research. As an exercise physiologist, that's exciting stuff. We used to thought, well, you know, resistance training helps because you're just, you're burning calories and burning calories is going to help, you know, eventually burn fat. But we used to think, you know, if you really want to lose weight, really focus on what I'm going to be my next tip which is moderate aerobic activity. That's still important, um, but now we know that there is this right in the muscle cell, kind of something genetically triggers to go, hey, I'm resistance training, I'm, I'm doing that, that load bearing work, um, start kicking up the fat burning. So it's a whole new mechanism that we didn't know about five, 10 years ago. So this is, this is exciting stuff. So if you're um, missing out on that weight training, that is why we've made it to tip number one, exciting new research that says you got to be doing it. And muscle is also something that is metabolically active. Like Tasha was just talking about, it's not just about the size of the muscle, 
there actually is metabolism or physiology happening inside the muscle. And it's estimated that about half a kilogram of muscle will burn an additional 30 to 40 calories at rest. So again, this is not just about when we're active. This is about translating this to even the moments that we're at rest. And of course, if we are burning calories at rest, it makes it easier for us to lose weight and to keep our fat levels down. For sure. So I already alerted to tip number two, which is getting in that moderate intensity aerobic workout. If you're somebody who can do high intensity, meaning you've been exercising for quite a while, you've got a good established baseline level of fitness, then there is some benefit in adding some high intensity bursts talk to um, who your exercise professional at live well to see if that's right for you. Um, but exercise or aerobic exercise, that's anything that's getting your heart pumping. And we know we've always known that that's good for losing weight. So that can be the, the machines you're using at live well, cycling, it can be swimming, hiking, rowing, dancing. I know dancing in my kitchen as I um, uh, cooking a meal is one of my favorite forms of exercise. It's also the one that makes my children roll their eyes the most, which might add to the fact that it's my favorite type of exercise. So you've seen that rating of in, um, perceived exertion or that rating intensity that we have in clinic. So, you know, moderate intensity is somewhere between that, that three and that five. It's moderate to hard and you want to be working there for about uh, 30 to 40 minutes, ideally, but remember, all movement counts. Um, so if you're, all, again, I said, if you're already been doing it for a while, taking up that intensity a little bit is going to allow you to burn a little bit more. And um, just make sure that you, of course, get a proper warm up and a proper cool down, because if you're going to have trouble during exercise, it's because you have left one of those key components up. So slowly bring your heart rate, get that um, intensity of exercise in, and then slowly bring your heart rate down. Tip number three. We're ready. Drinking water. And I oh, know it's, it's so such simple. a simple. <laughs> it's so simple. It's so simple, yet so, so challenging. Um, <laughs> So, of course, for the body to work optimally, it does have to be hydrated. Um, you know, many of you have likely heard before 50 to 60% of our total body weight is water. Um, but when losing weight, you want to lose fat, not water weight. You know, sometimes these diets that are like drop pounds in 30 days and, and diets that are full of frills and gimmicks, they are just forcing you to lose water weight and making you think that you're losing weight and you're actually not losing um, actual fat. Uh, our bodies do use water for cellular functions. It is one of the most important components of our body. And so when we're dehydrated, our body is simply not working at its best. And to lose weight takes metabolism and it takes physiological changes in pathways that require water. So dehydrating your body is actually not going to have a positive long-term impact for you. Uh, in working with members to lose weight, consuming the right amount of water can really make a difference. So draw, try maybe drinking two cups of water before a meal to get in your water and to also kind of fill you up before those meals. Um, but staying hydrated is a key component to your weight loss picture. For sure. And uh, tip number four is stop eating after 7 p.m. And it's really important to work with your body's natural circadian rhythms. And, and the way our bodies are designed is to keep us active during the day and then to rest when the sun goes down. So the foods we eat at night are actually less tolerated by the body. We can't metabolize their sugars as well as we might um, during the day. So those foods that you're eating in the evening may be even more fattening than they were had you eaten them in the morning. So again, a calorie is not a calorie. The time of the day that we eat them may 
uh, influence how much of those calories we end up storing. So ideally, each of us wants to have about a 12 hour window where we're not eating, where we kind of give the, the bodies uh, a moment to rest. And so, you know, for a lot of us, a good time frame might be seven in the morning till seven at night, gives us that 12 hour window to be able to not eat and allow our body to move into a true fat burning state. And our last and final tip, tip number five is to manage your stress. Stress, who knows? Who has stressed these days? Nobody is stressed, right? Everything's easy, easy breezy. Um, stress can wreak havoc on your body. It's like having that gas pedal just consistently pushing and burning away at it. Um, so chronically elevated stress hormones can actually make it very, very hard to lose weight. And one of the reasons is that they actually do boost your hunger. So trying things like simple breathing exercises, like breathing in for two and out for four. Those are very, very simple breathing exercises that we can do. Things like meditation, um, doing those types of activities throughout the day can actually help to kind of quell our, st our stress levels. Um, and um, again, stress is something that uh, we, it's in our everyday lives, we have to learn how to manage it. We will never really live a stress-free life as much as we all try to achieve that. And so really learning to live with it and to manage it um, is important because again, it is going to be quite a challenge to lose weight when we aren't managing our stress. All right, quick summary make a mental checklist, or if you have a pen, a physical checklist in front of you. If you're looking to lose weight or just even maintain a healthy weight that you're at now, are you getting in resistance training at least twice a week? Are you including three aerobic heart pumping workouts in your week? Are you drinking water every day? I have learned coffee is not the same as water. There's some, but it's not exactly the same. Are you eating after 7 p.m., giving yourself that 12-hour window? And how are you doing with your stress management? If you're able to implement these five tips into your life, you will likely start to see some positive weight management benefits. Um, and of course, we can't wait to see you at your Live Well session this week, but we are going to sign off now with a nice little kind of celebration by saying, let's all commit to our health this week by being planned and prepared so that we can go out there and live our lives to the fullest. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for um, supporting us. Thank you for showing up to your sessions. Don't forget to, uh, when you're in the clinic, um, enjoy being with each other, enjoy the staff, and we thank you for joining us today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.